Anatomy of the Human Mind Congress, which took place on December 31, 1960 and January 1, 1961 included a lecture titled A Talk on South Africa. This has been removed from the current version of the AHMC. What did Ellen say about South Africa? That Scientology does not want you to hear. Once again Chanology proves to be better custodians of the tech than the Church of Scientology itself. This is tape recording number 6012C31, AHMC Special. A lecture given by Aaron Hubbard to delegates at the Anatomy of the Human Mind Congress on the 31st of December 1960. The title of this lecture is A Talk on South Africa. I have been down in the most controversial country on earth today, which is South Africa. Would you like to hear a little something about South Africa? Okay, buddy. Now, uh, these chaps here, these chaps here are uh, Africans. Uh, they have a mission. They want to dance. About the best you can say for that. But as soon as they get their vote, it'll all be different. It'll all be different. Then they can dance. I asked one of them one day, I said, uh, would you like a vote? And he says, no, nope, no. Nope. And I said, oh, come on, you certainly want a vote. And he said, uh, no, no. And I said, well, uh, why don't you want to vote? He will me buy sunglasses from an American last year and he get gypped. Okay, buddy. There's, uh, be the, one of the new magistrates that they'll elect when they finally get the vote. Uh, probably require that the court be paid two skulls or something of the sort. Okay, buddy. The, the other day, by the way, there was a information pamphlet came out by the government of Borneo which told people to be nice to their snakes. Snakes don't like to be pointed at and they don't like to be yelled at or stamped at, so please don't bother their state. Go ahead, Bonnie. Right now you tell me, well, the government of South Africa does not permit the black man a vote. He <laughs> doesn't even know what a vote is. What, what do you want, another Congo? Now look, I'm just a yank. I'm not expected to be an authority on South Africa, and yet I've become one in Johannesburg two white South Africans because they themselves haven't bothered to inform themselves of what's going on with the government. Doesn't that sound wild? The communist message to the world is all you have to do is get the European out of Africa and there will be total peace and it will be okay in Africa. What happened when the Belgians left the Congo? Well, that's what will happen throughout Africa. All development and advance of any kind whatsoever will be stopped if the European is driven out of Africa. You can count. He's divided into two classes. He's the city Bantu, and he is the aboriginal tribesman. And the aboriginal tribesman is being brought up as fast as he can be brought up to some semblance of order. But he hates other tribes to such a degree that it is always a worry and an upset trying to keep them from killing each other off. That has been the history of South Africa. The blacks kill off the blacks. The blacks kill off the blacks. And all you've got to do is pull a stable government off the top of them, and they promptly start killing each other off. Actually, the Bantu is not like the American black man, and you can't understand anything about the Bantu by understanding anything about the American black man. The American black man in the first place has been mixed with Indian and white blood over a period of a couple of centuries or less, but has actually been in close proximity to the white man and white man civilization for a century or two, you see? But this is a different breed of cat. Do you know that the Bantu people were not conquered by the South Africans until the slaying of Dingen in about 1879 or thereabouts? And only then, a few of them became associated to any great degree with the whites. The Bantu is the wild man down there. The early 
associate of the South African with the Hottentot and the Bushmen, not the Bantu. The Bantu is not indigenous to the area, but comes down from Central Africa. Now, these sentiments are not particularly welcome to people. But I only call to your attention that I'm only telling you what I myself have observed, having been given ample opportunity to observe it, and I am giving you nothing but what I am myself have observed, and not anything anybody has told me. It's what I myself have seen. I have also seen people in South Africa who themselves had not had energy enough to go out and look at anything and who themselves had totally erroneous opinions concerning what was going on in the country. I have listened to some of the wildest tales from South Africans you ever wanted to hear about what was going on. They themselves didn't know. And I myself have in the odd position, that's when director of security down there says, come home, Yank. He, he, he's just mirroring the fact that in any gathering of South Africans, when they want to know what's going on in the government, they ask me. <laughs> now, I've driven an awful lot of weary miles to South Africa's a big country, looking at the country, looking at the people, and that sort of thing. And I'd say they've got about 50 years to go before they get the South African Bantu up to the same status and level of civilization of the American black. The Bantu doesn't register the same on an e-meter as a white. And I have had to start a whole program of research, in addition to everything else I've been doing, trying to find out how to read a Bantu on an e-meter. Because he doesn't operate like an American Negro or like a European. And I have learned some things about the Bantu, his nervous system and reaction, which are uh, of considerable assistance to people trying to get along with the Bantu. And the things they blame him for happen to be native in the Bantu. And his nervous system is not the same as ours. So he gets uh, tremendously blamed and knocked around for things he does differently than we do. It isn't he does them better or worse, but he does them differently. He's built differently. There are certain things you have to do. So I've had to make a considerable study of the Bantu. That study is not completed. And uh, the only thing I can say about it this time is it's arduously in progress. Before the coming of the white man, the population of the Bantu people was very small because he kept himself killed off. One tribe would go running over the heads of the other tribe with these very weapons which I'm holding in my hand here. They wipe out whole tribes, whole villages. They were like armies of ants. They just swarmed and swooped down upon everything and slaughtered every man, woman, and child in their path. Millions of blacks died this way. And the white man came along and kept them from fighting. Started civilizing them. As far as South Africa is concerned, the final thing I will say, which is probably very shocking to you, is there isn't any trouble in South Africa. There isn't any trouble. The only problems they've got in South Africa is the idea that they have problems. And the Bantu is working, and the government's working, and everybody's happy, but there are a lot of people around saying, yow, 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 look at all the trouble, look at all the upset, look at all the, give them all freedom, and gotta go through this, gotta go through this, gotta go through this, and this is, bleh. I'm not necessarily approving or disproving of South African policies. As a matter of sober fact, I believe their policy is slightly dangerous. I believe that they bring the Bantu up to a level of civilization and give him a total vote. I believe they'll fall short of bringing him up to that level that they desire and will yet give him the vote and will yet wipe out white civilization in South Africa. I believe that this is a high probability that will occur. But it'll occur because the nationalist people are too kind and too decent not because they are too rough. But my hat particularly is off to the white South African because he's been pretty scared from time to time. He's been jarred by lying press in his own country and so forth. He's been holding the fort any way he can. And these chaps realize that in Scientology they have an answer to ability that a person who can bring uh, control and quietness to his own area is very desirable to have in South Africa and they recognize that Scientology does this. Thank you very much for coming to the Congress and for being here today. Be sure to appear at the seminar. I will see you at 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Thank you.